are all in business. Discover all that's hidden with Surbhi in Beyond the Sensex. Weekdays at 11.30 a.m. only on UTVI. Life is short and dreams are many. The road to your dreams begins with money. With the right planning and apt advice, bring your dreams to life. With smart money at these times only on UTVI. This is the UTV Network and you with UTVI. They say it's all about the money and you know what? They may just be right. In fact, that's why the name of this show, it's called Smart Money. Hello and a very warm welcome. In fact, don't you wish your money would rain down like this? We've got ways. Here's a look at what you'll be taking away from this episode. Harshil wants to spend 60,000 US dollars to expand his marketing skills. The question is, can he afford it? If you're traveling abroad, get yourself a travel insurance. We'll tell you why and how. An investment of 10,000 rupees 20 years ago and two shops to date to show for it. A mother-daughter duo share their success story with smart money. It strains the kind of relationship we have with our money. Money comes, money goes. Now, Harshal understood this at a very young age. And now at 21, he started his own business. But now he wants to expand his skills. He wants to get himself a marketing degree from abroad. Something that's going to cost him 60,000 US dollars. Can he afford it? My name is Harshil Karya. I just graduated. I've studied mass media. And I used to be a student of JN College. Once graduation was done, three of my friends and me got together and we've started a company called Foxy Moron. It's basically a digital marketing and new media marketing services company. We've just started small, so obviously the big dream would be to establish ourselves as a global player. So one of the things that I would like to do as a stepping stone for my business to succeed in the short term would be to go and study abroad. Uh, in one of the premier world institutions and grasp some of the skills, knowledge, uh, just understand the culture and apply those skills to my business. Now this habit of making money and saving money came pretty early to Harshil. In fact, ever since his college days, he started doing odd jobs and started saving money as well. Let's see what he's accumulated until now. Harshil makes 20,000 rupees every month from freelance work. Besides that, his business makes 3 to 4 lakhs a year and the business is likely to grow at 30%, he says. His fixed deposits amount to 50,000 rupees and the savings in his bank account are 75,000 rupees. So with all of that, how does Harshil plan his education abroad? Well, it's easy. We put him in touch with our certified financial planner, Karthik Chaveri. Karthik's got a challenge in front of him. To plan for Harshil's education, which is as expensive as $120,000 for two years. That's roughly 48 lakhs. Tell me, what do you have in mind? Have you thought how this money is going to be funded? I mean, loan is obviously one uh, you know, solution, but um, I mean, is there a possibility that uh, you know, your family might be supporting something? And if yes, uh, approximately to what extent? I'm hoping that my family can support some amount of it. Uh, I'm hoping that a large chunk of it I could earn myself and the other other chunks, say anything from 20 to 50 percent, I think that that would come from my family. See, if I was just to summarize our cash flows, you know, I mean, things that we have in front of us and things that we can use. You said you earn about 20 odd thousand rupees from the freelancing work that you do. Let's look at this 20,000, you know, I mean, that's something which is steady, which is likely to, you know, be sustainable and which is going to go on and on. Yeah. Let's take about 75% of that money. So let's work with a 15,000 budget, okay? And the remaining 5,000, you just keep for yourself, like contingency or, you know, anything else that you might want to do. You might want to buy something. Definitely. Uh, broadly speaking, in terms of what your strategy should be, should be based on three things right now. One, uh, minimal resources in terms of loans. 
which is maximum resources from yourself. The second thing that needs to happen is uh, trying to invest the maximum that you can as far as possible without really compromising yourself. And the third is to invest in a risk reducing strategy. So which means because we have a four year time frame, the fund or the money that we will invest right now would be at a higher level of risk and as we move closer to our goal, we'll keep reducing the risk. So what's the first option to fund Harshal's education abroad? What we do is, we use the 15,000 that we have right now, we invest that, we invest the 1,25,000 that we have, and we take, like I said, a higher risk stance, so we expect to earn, say, close to about 14, 15% on that money, okay? And of course, we're going to touch this money after four years. So those are the two investments that we can make straight away. At the end of one year, let us take again about two thirds of the money that you are going to get. So let's say in the first year I expect to get two lakhs and then three and four and five. 25 to 26 lakh rupees will grow from Harshal's business and savings within four years. And the remaining 24 lakhs would be given by his family. The second option is of course there's no family support. Out of the total 48 lakhs, half would be funded through his own investments. The remaining 24 lakhs would be through a loan. If I take a five year, let's say repayment period, then you're looking at an installment of about 70,000 a month. You know, what that means is 70,000 is post tax, which means you need to earn a minimum 100,000 so that if you pay a 30% tax, you'll have 70,000 to service the EMI of the loan. So the, so the question that I had was, what if I con continue with that 26 to 28 lakh investment for a longer sure, period of time? Sure. That's a very interesting option. I mean, that's a beautiful way of looking at it. And that, in fact, is my option number three. In the third option, Harshal can take full 48 lakh rupees on loan, get support from his family, and at the same time have his investments grow to 65 lakhs in six years. You're looking at a broad level, I mean an overall picture, you're looking at about 65 to 67 lakhs of net worth at the end of six years. And your loan, like I mentioned in the previous case, your loan is at 60 lakhs because your 48 lakhs would have you know, accrued some interest component to it and would have become 60 lakhs payable. So in that kind of a scenario, you're actually in a 5 lakh plus. If you decide to just pay off your entire loan, you'll still have 5 lakh surplus in your hand. You have a lot of possibilities open which is you can either prepay your entire loan and have a 5 lakh surplus with you or if you're able to find a very good job that you know pays you in excess of 2 lakhs per month then you will be able to quite comfortably even afford an EMI to pay that 68 lakhs loan at the same time have an asset of 65 lakhs. So what should Harshal be doing now? What should his immediate plan be? In my view Harshal right now does not have any strategy per se. He's got some fixed deposit investments and he's got another uh, you know, substantial amount of money in his savings account, which is obviously generating close to about 3 to 4%. So that is money which could be very effectively deployed by getting into diversified equity funds. And even this 15,000, the route that he could follow is do a systematic investment plan. Now what he could do out of this 15,000 is allocate close to about say 30% of his money into a sectoral fund. and another 40% of his money into a diversified equity fund and another 30% into aggressive and mid-cap fund. So he could choose to have about three to four SIPs. So clearly, Harshal is going to have his dream fulfilled very, very soon. If you have a goal in mind and you're wondering how you're going to organize your finances, just tell us about it. We'll solve it for you. Our SMS number is 5995. All you have to do is SMS SMART, put your name, your city and your question and send it across to us. Of course, the email option is always open smartmoney at utvi.com is our email ID. We're taking a small break here on Smart Money, but after that, we'll talk about your travel insurance policy. It's very important you have one. When you travel abroad, we'll tell you why, and we'll tell you how you can go about getting one as well, but that's after a small commercial break. Don't go away. Start your day as we get you everything to get up and get going. The latest in international and domestic news. 
global cues that determine market trends. Health tips that gear you up for the day. Reviews that give you the best value for your money. Cut through the morning rush to stay ahead. Wake up call tomorrow at 7 a.m. only on UTVI. Where's the market heading today? Are you riding the bull or seeing the rage of the bear? Gain a peel. Keep track of your best prospects. Catch all the midday market action. Evaluate every market direction. Connect to the UTBI engine. An experience. Analytics at its advanced best. Market analytics. Weekdays at 12.30 p.m. Only on UTVI. must understand that government's capacity to subsidize is not infinite, is indeed limited. Ultimately, the subsidy money also comes from the people. This is Smart Money, the program that tells you how to get smart with your money. And one thing we don't particularly get smart about is the time that we travel. Travel insurance is not generally top of mind. Now we are living in a time that we do need to cut corners, but travel insurance is not that kind of space. To tell us more about that, I'm joined by Khalid Sohel. He's from Tata AIG to tell us more about the importance of travel insurance. Very important, do you think, Khalid? Absolutely. As important as your visa and your uh, ticket for the flight, uh, more than that, because uh, nobody knows the, the eventualities or mishaps that, that may be there in today's world. Right. What kind of uh, eventualities, what kind of mishaps am I thinking about? To take you into detail, a sickness may be a heart attack or maybe a high fever uh, for which you don't need to get admitted into a hospital, but you need to consult a doctor. And please remember that many of these doctors abroad, especially say USA, are very, very expensive. What about other parts of the world? Because obviously, uh, if you go to a Southeast Asian country, it may not be as high as the USA. So there are these comparative uh, costs at stake. I don't need a $500,000 policy when I'm going to Bangkok. I need just a $50,000 policy. Why? It's because a consultation fee in Bangkok or Singapore is equal or a little high as compared to India. Abroad medical expenses, remember, are very high as opposed to what you do pay for medical uh, needs over here in India. So naturally, uh, you need to be covered for that much more and a travel insurance policy will do that for you. What are the options before you? How do you go about it? Take a look at this. Going for a trip abroad? But have you insured yourself? Yes, we are talking about travel insurance. Probably the most ignored aspect when you're traveling abroad. Though a late starter in India, travel insurance happens to be one area which is catching up fast. Travel policies offer various types of coverage. The options available in the Indian market are Flight Life Insurance Flight Life Insurance usually provides coverage for a single flight. Coverage ends with the end of the flight. Travel Accident Insurance Travel Accident Insurance covers travel to and from your destination. Lost Baggage Insurance The insurance company pays the actual value of your missing bags or items. Overseas Health Insurance When you're hit with a hospital, doctor or dental bill overseas, the insurance company will pay instead of you paying cash and seeking reimbursement from your medical insurer back home. Trip Cancellation and Interruption Insurance Trip Cancellation and Interruption Insurance provides reimbursement for non-refundable prepayments. So if you don't want to land yourself in a foreign land with a whopping bill to deal with, a travel insurance won't be a bad idea. 
So there you have it, lots of options before you and we're telling you how you should go about it as well. But let me ask Khalid, now there are obviously lots of options available for me, there are lots of products in the market. On what basis do I choose one over the other? Uh, I would say that the first thing that we must realize is what cover do we want. If suppose I'm traveling to USA, I must have the highest sickness cover. I must have $500,000 highest sickness cover. But if I'm going to say Singapore, Malaysia, Bangkok, I don't need $500,000, $50,000 is more sufficient for me. So I need to be conscious as to what cover do I want. That is number one. Number two, the most important thing is a travel policy must be judged on the capability of the insurance company to provide assistance to its insured. In terms of coverage, your travel insurance will cover you for certain things to a certain degree, a certain percentage. Now that percentage, I understand, varies from one policy to another. If you're talking about a sickness cover, the sickness cover is divided into two parts, inpatient and outpatient. Outpatient means basically where you go to a doctor, consult and come back. That cover is a reimbursable cover. We reimburse the claim when it is made to us after the passenger has come back and that reimbursement is in Indian rupees. It is not in dollar or any other foreign currency. But if there is an insured who is hospitalized, then it is cashless. Within the cover, whatever his cover is, till that limit, we will provide a cashless service to him. He doesn't have to pay anything. There is a difference in the kind of risk that you might um, undertake. So if I'm getting a travel insurance policy for myself, do I assess this risk and get a policy according to that? Shorter the travel, lesser the risk. Longer the travel duration, higher the risk. If I'm going for 10 days, I'm not going to be venturing out on my own. I will not be driving. I will... I, I don't know the country very well, I don't know the people, I don't know the location, so I am with somebody very safe, sound, secure. If I'm on a ledger for a long term, say six months or seven months or two months or three months, I will venture out more and more into unknown territory and the risk increases. So shorter the duration, lesser the risk, higher the duration, stay abroad, higher the risk. Right. Where most people get stuck though is when it comes to making claims and getting your money reimbursed for one. How do I go about making claims? Is that procedure generally simple with uh, travel insurance companies or is it a long drawn out process? It has become very simple in India after the private uh, insurance players have come in. If there is an inpatient hospitalization, the policy is cashless. I don't need to pay anything. The, the settlement happens directly between the insurance company and the hospital. But if there is a reimbursement claim, the claim is settled in seven working days. I see. But this essentially happens in uh, the country that I'm traveling to. Can I call someone over there and will this claim get settled over there? Or do I need to come back to the country and then make that claim? You can submit the claim form wherever you are by calling the assistance company. But as per the, the, the government of India rules, the claim will be settled in Indian rupees in India. Now, there are lots of our viewers who travel consistently. They have lots of trips uh, planned abroad for business or for pleasure. Now, for someone who's traveling that regularly, do I need to get a travel policy each time that I travel? Or is there a way that I can get it for a year's span of time? There is annual multi-trip available. A manual multi-trip, you can travel any number of times in a year, provided that your stay there is not, does not exceed 30 days. So, I can travel for four days, come back, go for another 10 days, come back, I can go for another 15 days, come back, and any number of trips that I take, I am covered in a year, provided each single trip does not exceed 30 days. Travel insurance, like Khalid is saying, it is quite crucial to get yourself that insurance. Accidents happen, hospitalization happens, we hope they don't, but sometimes they do, and when they do, that's when you need a travel insurance, the costs are very high, and when you incur them, you realize, damn, I wish I had a travel insurance. So be guarded, be smart, and get yourself a travel insurance. We're taking a small break here on Smart Money, but if you have any further questions on this subject, you can write in to us. Our email ID is smartmoney at utbi.com. We also have an SMS number for you. That's 59995. All you have to do is put your name, your city, and your question after that, and send it across to us. We'll get it answered for you. We're taking a small break, like I said, but we'll be back to take in the questions that you've already sent us. Plus, we'll share a success story with you, but that's all after a break. Stay with us. NBFC is a non-banking finance company. A finance company which is not a bank. It does not operate like a bank, but it still provides finance and financial services. 
it complements the entire banking system. Start your day as we get you everything to get up and get going. The latest in international and domestic news. Global cues that determine market trends. Health tips that gear you up for the day. Reviews that give you the best value for your money. Cut through the morning rush to stay ahead. Wake up call. Monday through Saturday 7 a.m. Only on UTVR. This is Smart Money, the show that tells you how to get smart with your money. And this particular segment of the show, we tackle the questions that you've sent us. And to answer them today, we're joined by Nihar Jambusarya. He's a chartered accountant. He's joining us on the show for the first time. Welcome to the show, Nihar. Thank you. Nihar, our first question is rather timely. Samir Jain has written in from Indore, and this is his question. He says he's a salaried individual. He has a salary of 7 lakh rupees. His age is 30 years, and now he wants to know that with these new fund managers managing EPF corpus, a piece of news that came in just this week, will the EPF return increase? And he's wondering if it is a good time now to increase the EPF contribution that he makes. Is this a good time to make an EPF uh, contribution? Of course, part of it is mandatory, but should he increase That's his question to us. The rates of interest are not linked directly with the return of EPF. I see. The rates of interest are linked with the general rate of interest prevailing. If the general rate of interest goes up, the EPF rate of interest will also go up. Mm -hmm. My answer would be, see that his salary is 7 lakh, so he is in the highest tax bracket. Right. Whatever interest he will earn on G EPF, it will be fully taxable. Whereas there are other modes available, uh, comparatively less risky, as less risky as EPF, like investment in mutual fund, where whatever dividend he gets, it will be totally tax free. So instead of increasing the investment in EPF, if he diverts some of the investment in other modes like mutual fund, where the further return is totally tax-free, probably it would benefit him more. Right, Samir. So what uh, Nihar is actually saying is that EPF returns will not go up immediately. Right now is the time that you want to invest in mutual funds. And you know how the capital markets are at this point in time. Let's move on and get our next question in. Manita has written in from Chennai Nihar. Now, here's her question. She is also a salaried individual like Samir. She has a salary of 5 lakh uh, rupees per annum. She is 28 years old and she says she missed filing her income tax returns for the year 2007-2008. What should she do now? How much penalty will she have to pay? Those are her questions to us. Manita wants to know that she missed this. Of course, you weren't watching our last episode where we told you how to do it in the shortest possible uh, span of time. We told them five tips as to how they can uh, file their tax returns on time. But, well, Manita, you missed that. Now let's see what uh, Nihar has to say about paying penalties. If he has only salary income, then the required tax is deducted at source. The tax which he is supposed to pay is already deducted at source. Now if the return is little late, she will not attract any interest or any penalty. So she need not worry about it. The return can be filed even now, say in the month of August, September, as early as possible, so that you comply with the provision. But there is no penalty, no interest. So those were the questions that you sent us, and thanks to Nihar, we've answered them as well. But uh, for you, Nihar, and for our viewers, we have a success story now. This is of a person by the name of Paloma. Now, she and her mother, Anju, they run two shops. The first shop was started by her mother in 1988 with a sum as small as 10,000 rupees. Now they have two shops, like I said. How did they do it? Here's their story. Anju Chaudhary was barely 17 when she got married. 
plucked out of school in the 11th standard, she lived a dream of earning her own money and making it big. Her creative instincts led her to the world of dress designing. Working with the boutique, she saved funds to live her dream and soon she had it. A traditional wear outlet opened with her savings worth 10,000 rupees. 10,000 rupees, that was not enough. So I had to take loans. I took um, around 2-3 uh, lakhs in the beginning, then later on also. Around 7-8 years I was taking loans and paying the interest and all that. This is how I did. Now they own two shops, one in Kolaba and another at Trident Hotel. Begun with an initial investment of 10,000, now their business has an annual turnover of 12 lakh rupees. Anju is happy and satisfied with what she has accomplished, though Paloma is gearing up for a bigger business move, getting another outlet under the umbrella. Although we have a comfortable life now, my mom, my mother is happy, uh, but I still want to get another shop for myself which I think uh, should take me a couple of years. So a mother-daughter duo actually setting up business and taking it to another level after starting at just rupees 10,000 rupees. What do you make of that, Nihar? Yeah, it's uh, a risk taken by a mother, carried it forward to a level. And after that, uh, with consistent efforts, a lot of confidence, if they've built up business, to this level, it sends a good message for the youngsters. Yes. You can start something new and with new ideas. Us, lots of us, uh, Nihar, I find, are very keen to set up businesses of our own. In fact, if you have a plan...